Hey, how's it going YouTube and back in the video and today I'm going to be talking about the Derrick Rose comeback that not a lot of people are actually going to want to acknowledge. Now a lot of people are under the assumption that okay Derrick Rose, although he does have some good games, he's pretty much strictly a bench player he's no longer the superstar he once was and now yes he's not on the mvp level that he once was earlier in his career the dude is probably still one of the best point guards or even just best bench players in the entire league and i think for sure could easily start on a lot of other teams if given the opportunity so in this video i'm gonna be getting into re reasons why i think he got wrote off I'll be going over the obvious ones and not so obvious ones and the actual comeback itself and how he's coming back silently and not a lot of people are really wanting to talk about it. So I'm going to be getting to all that in this video. So if you do like it at any point, hit the like button and subscribe button. I mean the world to me. And without further ado, without running on too much, let's get right into this video. Alright, so the first thing we begin for this video is going to be the most obvious one that literally everybody knows about. That the reason he got wrote off is because of his injuries. I mean, he's a little fragile, you know, he's just a tad fragile. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But, like, obviously, right after he started winning, he won that MVP and became the youngest MVP in league history. He went down with an injury, and pretty much since then, he has been injured every single year and has gotten a major injury a lot of times and has consistently not been able to finish seasons due to that injury and losing large chunks of time. And when you lose large chunks of time people one forget how good you are because you're not playing but two also assume that you're not going to come back any better because you've been rehabbing from your injury and not really working out so really injuries are just never good for a player at all and that's a huge huge reason why Derrick Rose is no longer seen as a starting level point guard but another reason is because he his team hopping now the team hopping isn't completely his fault but it also kind of is because he went to the New York Knicks got injured and he wasn't having the best most efficient season when he was with the Knicks and he either got traded or signed with the Cleveland Cavaliers where he was supposed to be a big contributor to that team but ended up playing very badly as with the Cleveland Cavaliers he was only able to average 9.8 points per game 1.6 assists per game and 1.8 rebounds per game on only 25% three-point shooting so he was not a very efficient player and was probably hurting the Cleveland Cavaliers more than he was actually helping them so that resulted in the Cavaliers in that huge trade line that they had that year they ended up trading Derrick Rose to the Minnesota Timberwolves where he started off that season with the Timberwolves averaging only 5.8 points per game, 1.2 assists per game, and 0.7 rebounds per game on even worse three-point shooting at 16%. So, I mean, at this point, it was pretty safe to say around the league, Derrick Rose is on his way out. I mean, you can't get much worse and least efficient than what Derrick Rose was doing. He was playing extremely bad. Like, he was a... He wasn't even a shell of himself. He went from Derrick Rose to Derek Flower. Like, he, that was a horrible joke. But, I mean, he just was nowhere near what he even once was. He wasn't even a solid player. He was a bad player at this point, And a ton of people wrote him off. Well, then the next year, this is where the comeback starts. The next year with the Minnesota Timberwolves, he showed a lot of promise. Because although a lot of people saw him now as a bad player, and almost everyone was pretty much given up on him. Like, they wrote him off completely. Like, no one expected Rose to do really much anything else with the rest of his career. Well, he ended up having a great season off the bench that really no one talked about except for one part of the season that I'm getting into. In that season with the Timberwolves, his second season, he averaged 18 points per game, 4.3 assists per game, 2.7 rebounds per game, on 37% shooting from the three in 51 games. Now, yes, he only played 51 games, but he at least showed that potential to play very solid as a for a long period of time. I mean, 18 points per game off the bench for anybody is extremely solid and although 37% from the three-point line is not exactly great it's also way better than the 25 and 16% three-point shooting he was doing just the year before so I mean he already showed tons of improvement and showed what he can do in an offseason where he's not injured the whole time and I mean also that season um ended up showcasing one of those iconic moments in NBA history where Derrick Rose was able to score 50 points in a win over the Utah Jazz and that actually just kind of showed us like the the greatness of Derrick Rose and how great he could possibly be and that at least some of that high high potential that we saw when he won MVP is still in that body and what also not a lot of people think about or they just forget about after that 50 point game that wasn't just a flash in the pan because after that 50 point game it preceded a 12 game stretch where Derrick Rose was averaging 23 points per game 4.4 assists per game 3.3 rebounds per game on 56% three-point shooting those stretchy games show Derrick 
Derrick Rose was still there. He is still Derrick Rose. He is still that dude. Like he can help take over a game any point in time. And I mean, for that 12 point, I mean, for that 12 game stretch, he was one of the best point guards in the league. He wasn't one of the best bench players. He wasn't one of the best point guards on the bench. He was one of the best point guards in the league in that 12 game stretch and he played at an extremely high level that we haven't seen since his MVP season and now even that he left on the Timberwolves which while I was pretty surprised with that the Timberwolves let him walk due to how good he was playing but nevertheless he did go and he ended up signing with the Detroit Pistons and I think the Detroit Pistons got a great player at least a great bench player to come off their bench I mean he's coming off his best season in about two years two to three years he's coming off of a very very solid season I'm sure there's a lot of other people that wanted him for agency and he was able to choose Detroit so I think Detroit did end up getting a very very solid player and when he did go to Detroit when he was having the season before it got canceled he was still having a very solid season averaging 18.1 points per game 5.6 assists per game and 2 points four rebounds per game on about the same three-point shooting percentage so I mean he still had a very good season but the only difference is that 12 game stretch turned into a 23 game stretch where he was averaging 22.7 points per game 5.8 assists per game 3.1 rebounds per game on pretty good three-point percentage as well so I mean he showed that potential just for even longer now so if he can continue the stretch and now yes I know he's 31 so he's gonna get older and start regressing just naturally by age but if he can just keep improving a little bit throughout the seasons if he can keep these extremely elite play stretches um, keep increasing the time that they last eventually people are going to have to look at Derrick Rose again as a starting level point guard at minimum now I don't think he's ever gonna make another all-star game just because of how tarnished his name is due to how bad he played for those years with the um Cavs and how about he started off with the Timberwolves and years like that I just don't think he's gonna ever be an all-star I think his name's too done but I also think that it's gonna get to a point to maybe at least one more year in his career where he can legitimately start on a very good team and see how far they can go in the playoffs and I think it would be very very interesting to see how good of a player or how good of a team could be as when it is led at Derrick Rose at the point guard position. I think it would be very, very interesting. Now, I'm not saying you can build around Derrick Rose. He's not that good. You can't have him as your centerpiece. It's impossible. But say you have two superstars and Derrick Rose is the starting point guard, right? Well, I think that is going to be good enough if you add role players around all of them as well. I think Derrick Rose is more than good enough to be a starting point guard on a championship level team. Now, obviously, the star talent would have to already be there. Derrick Rose isn't that star that he, you can push you over the edge. But I think he's one of those elite role players that you can that will help you push you over the edge because I mean that's something every championship team needs they need the very good role players on their team to win championships I mean look at the Lakers they have Danny Green, JaVale McGee, Dwight Howard, uh, Kyle Kuzma all those are very good role players the Clippers, Patrick Beverly, uh, Terrence Harrell um, I just said I just destroyed his name I'm so sorry I don't know I had a brain fart something Harrell put it that way yeah and um they also have other good role players as well. And I mean, just teams like that, championship level teams need good role players. I mean, the Milwaukee Bucks are pretty much nothing but role players after you get past Giannis and Chris Middleton. So I think for sure, Derrick Rose could be one of the best role players on a championship level team. But unfortunately, guys, that's me for Ville. So comment below, do you agree with me? Do you think Derrick Rose could come back? Do you think he's on a starting level point guard? Or do you think he's just a very good role player? Any other thoughts in the comment section below? If you do like the video, a point the like button and subscribe button. It'll be the absolute world to me. And I hope you have a blessed day. Because I had a blessed day. So you need to have a blessed day. See you in the next video. Goodbye. Boo. Blah.